Tôi xin mời quý vị tiếp tục theo dõi chương trình câu chuyện kinh doanh kỳ này và chúng tôi sẽ tiếp tục trò chuyện ngay sau đây với giáo sư Gail McDonald là chủ tịch của trường đại học RMIT Việt Nam về tình trạng thất nghiệp của sinh viên cũng như sự kết nối giữa các trường đại học và các doanh nghiệp ở các lĩnh vực ngành nghề. Welcome back, uh, Ms. Gail. It's been an interesting conversation and discussion about uh, what we can learn uh, from Uh, from what you've been doing in RMIT Vietnam so that to provide more opportunities for students um, after they graduated. There is one um, other issue is that most of the um, Vietnamese students, they want to get into the um, state universities, like mm. the top universities yes. of the country, because they think that uh, they would have, uh, they, they would get a better education mm. and better opportunities um, after they graduate. Um, and I think that, be, uh, but the thing is that uh, a huge number of people that graduate, graduated from state universities still mm. cannot find jobs. Mm. So do you think, um, you know, government should do something here or what well, is the role of the government here? Well, the government is obviously um, a part funder or full funder of, of universities, so they can mm. certainly Um, provide expectations, which they have been doing recently, saying mm -hmm. that we expect f greater levels of, of employability. But essentially, that's um, really the responsibility of the university mm. to establish those types of programs, similar to the ones that I was talking about before, of actually having internship programs, an employability office, a placement service, having those. That's the responsibility of, of the the university, the university. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's where they place their resources um, and often you have to reallocate the resources in order to to put more resources into an organizational unit such as an employment service. I think the government role is obviously in Vietnam as it is in many um, uh, countries, Australia, New Zealand, uh, the UK. It, it, it is uh, a, a funder of, of, of universities, but there is also a very strong desire at the moment by the Vietnamese government to give universities more autonomy, to give them more responsibility when it comes to managing uh, their finances, the way that they run their programs, how they select students, and we can see that trend uh, starting to occur here in Vietnam and it's very consistent with what has happened overseas. So I think that the government quite rightly is saying these are our expectations, here are our targets, but we're going to let you decide how you manage your finances, how you actually um, prioritize Uh, activities within your university and uh, we are actually going to be concerned about making sure that you spend the money wisely but more importantly we're concerned about the quality of uh, the, the teaching, the quality of the research mm. and the quality of the graduate outcomes. Yeah and there's a lot of improvement that we need to do there. We, we know that Vietnam is um, a developing country and we have uh, more than 6% GDP growth every year. Mm. Unfortunately the number of employment people um, in Vietnam is uh, quite high compared mm. to in Australia and uh, because we are not doing a good job in, in in um, training our students um, after they graduate so that they can get a job easier. So what do you think, um, I mean, the opportunities of, of the students here I, and in Australia? I actually think that there are a lot more opportunities here. Mm. I, I do believe that. Uh, for, for our graduates, we find that they tend to progress up the organizational hierarchy a lot quicker than they would perhaps in Australia. In Australia, mm. the transition through to supervisor, to middle level manager, to manager is a lot slower. Here, we find that those students actually get um, promoted quite, quite rapidly. But as you, you, um, you commented in your, in your opening remarks, a lot of our students go into multinational firms. Yes. So uh, they tend to have higher levels of English mm. capability because of the way that they've been trained, uh, the type of programs that they've done, and because of... So I think the opportunities here, because of the growth that you referred to, mm. because of the number of, of multinational firms and foreign investment that's coming into Vietnam, it's providing quite unique opportunities, which I think the graduates here in Vietnam um, could really benefit from 
Far more so than what I think a number of, of graduates are perhaps experiencing in Australia. Mm. But that's only the case of RMIT students. Mm. Uh, but we have, other than that, we have uh, a huge number of um, students from other universities as mm. well. And uh, one of the things that we um, are facing right now is that if uh, the students don't have a good relationship with the companies or the businesses that they wanted to work in, then it's hard for them to find a job. Um, so what do you think about this? So you're right. Um, students can go so far to, to uh, engage in those relationships. Um, the competitions, the uh, HSBC uh, business competitions, there's a lot of competitions. Engaging and participating in those competitions is a very good way of students to actually get themselves noticed and mm. perhaps get the relationships with industry. So that's part of, of, of the process, but the other part is actually the universities themselves, the staff in the universities, the academic staff, the administrative staff, making those connections uh, with industry. And for academic staff, it's uh, looking at how they might be able to change their assessment. So it, what we refer to at RMIT Vietnam is authentic assessment. Mm. We don't have any now, any midterm examinations. Mm. You don't go into an examination hall and sit there with a clock on the wall and they say, turn the page now and you write for three hours. Wow. No. What we have is we usually have, for example, in a professional communication course, we have somebody from an advertising agency who will come in and brief the students on a problem. And it's a real problem and it's a real need. And then they've got to go away and work on that problem, write that problem up or present um, what they've done and bring it back. And then they are judged by the academic and the industry. So that's what we call authentic or experiential learning, where they're actually being assessed on a real problem that they would likely experience in the workplace. What uh, about what you've been doing there in RMIT Vietnam? Because you give your students a lot of opportunities to get themselves exposed uh, with different careers or the things that they might like so mm -hmm. that they can go back to their parents and convince their parents that this is what I prefer so that uh, and it's true that um, Vietnamese students are now more independent in their thinking. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they want to choose for themselves so that they would feel no regret um, mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, and we will get back to that um, after a short break and when the program continues. Thank you. Thưa quý vị, mời quý vị tiếp tục giữ kênh để chúng tôi còn tiếp tục trò chuyện với giáo sư Gail McDonald uh, sau một vài phút giải lao.